listening to the podcast Advertising Playbook, your resource to better understand and execute successful podcast ad campaigns. Hello and welcome to the podcast Advertising Playbook. I'm your host, Heather Osgood, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to buy podcast ads. So podcasting has been around for a very long time. Actually, I just realized podcast started in 2004 and we are now in 2024, which means that we have come to the 20 year anniversary of podcasting, which is pretty cool, right? So podcasts have been around for 20 years. There's lots and lots of podcast ad ad buying that has been going on for a very long time, but it isn't always super easy or super intuitive. And so I wanted to put together this episode to talk to you about how to actually go about buying podcast ads. So the first way that you can buy podcast advertising is you can go directly to the podcast. So let's say you love a podcast and you'd really want to advertise on that show. You can find their contact information on their website. Most podcasters have a website and A lot of times it says advertise somewhere on the site and you can just fill out a form and then hopefully someone from that show will contact you and you can negotiate directly with that show to advertise on their podcast. Next, you can go through a network or a representation firm. So my company, True Native Media, is a podcast representation firm. What that means is that we work with about 100 different podcasts and our role is to connect those podcasts with advertisers. Similarly, a network is a group of podcasts that is being managed by a company of some sort. And so you can go to those networks, you can go to those rep firms, and they will have many different podcasts that you can buy. And it's much easier than going show by show, right? So instead of going directly to one podcast, when you go to a network, you can say, hey, I want to buy you know, this big campaign, I have a $50,000 budget, I want to buy lots of ads on lots of shows. And it's very effective because that network, that rep firm, they understand podcast ad buying, they know how you should do it, they can help advise you on how to set up a campaign and how to structure it so that you're going to reach the goals that you have for the campaign. Whereas often when you're going directly to a podcaster, that podcaster doesn't know anything about advertising, right? So unless the podcast happens to be about advertising, they aren't necessarily going to be able to instruct you on how to best buy their show. They're going to give you the options that they have, but they probably aren't going to know a ton about creating success for you. Now, granted, they're going to know their show well, they're going to know their audience well, and I'm sure that they're going to have experience on how to create success with their particular show, but they aren't going to be able to give you as high level of knowledge and experience because they're just operating with their one podcast. If you've got a larger budget, and typically I would say you need a budget of about 100,000 or more, you can go and work with a podcast ad buying agency. Um, There are many agencies out there now. It seems like every day there's a new agency that's popping up that's doing podcast ad buying for their clients, which is phenomenal. I'm super happy with that. Uh, But you can work within an agency. And An agency often is going to be very experienced with ad buying in general and with podcast and buying in particular, and they can help you with your overall campaign. They can help you to understand your overall marketing mix and how podcast ads are going to work with you in your your marketing mix. And so that can be very powerful to work with an agency. So if you do have a budget of 100,000 or more, I would advise that you think about working with an agency because that can be helpful. But, you know, a bigger agency is going to want you to continue to spend a lot of money with them as well. Whereas if you go to a a network or a rep firm, they can advise you well also, and they're not necessarily going to want you to spend $100,000 a quarter. Um, They might be happy with that, you know, that $100,000 buy for the year, perhaps. So, um, you know, think about what is going to be best for you. If you have a lot of experience in-house with podcast ad buying, then obviously that will also dictate how you're going to go about buying podcast ads. But those are really, I would say, a few of the primary ways to buy them. Um, There are certainly also different outlets online where you can go online. You know, a lot of different rep firms 
have online platforms where you can go and buy ads, you know, platforms like AdvertiseCast or Gumball. I would say the downside of that is there isn't really somebody there to advise you. So if you've never done podcast ad buying before, I wouldn't recommend that you try your first campaign by going online and setting something up through an automated platform because um, you really should get some help from, you know, from them. Now, with Gumball and Advertise Cast, and I'm sure other online buying platforms, you can receive assistance. And really, in many ways, they're just like a rep firm. So yeah, so those, those are some options. Now, let's talk about the type of ad that you can buy. So there's, you know, these different channels that you can use to actually purchase the ad. But what are you going to be buying is the real question. Now, in podcasting, we talk a lot about host read endorsement type ads. And in my opinion, host read endorsement ads are still really the mainstay in the podcast space. You know, we are seeing an increase in programmatic, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But that host read ad is still kind of the bread and butter of the podcast space. Now, what we mean when we say a host read ad is we are talking about an ad that is voiced by the host. So the host of that podcast is going to read the ad. I will say it still takes me by surprise when I'm listening to a show with a celebrity and the celebrity does the ad read. I think that it's funny. <laughs> Just like, oh, wow, the celebrity is actually doing the ad read. But it's pretty cool. So if you are, if you're interested in having that host read your ad, that comes with so much power and so much impact. And it's a really good way to do podcast ads. So primarily the ads are going to be host read ads. They may come along with personal experience. They may come along with endorsements. Those are all items that you need to negotiate when you are placing your ad buy. Now, there are also announcer read ads that can be purchased. And announcer read ads, typically, if you want to do an announcer red ad, you're going to need to come to the table with that produced. Some companies will produce ads for you. But I would say typically we really only see announcer red ads when we're talking about programmatic as opposed to a direct sale. Now, there are also producer red ads. And producer red ads is when maybe, you know, I think that um, Super Soul Sundays is a great example. That's Oprah Winfrey's podcast and Oprah Winfrey does not do ad reads. <laughs> um, Joe Rogan may, but Oprah Winfrey does not. So Oprah has a producer that does her ad reads. And she does a very nice job, I will say. I've always liked their ad reads. But the producer is doing the ad read. So it's, it's an ad that's customized to the audience. It's customized to the program. But it just isn't the host doing the ad read. So it's kind of like one degree of separation instead of multiple degrees of separation in terms of how that ad is being created. And I, I think producer red ads definitely do have a lot of impact, maybe not quite as much as a host red ad, but it also depends on the conditions in, you know, in which you're buying, you know, that, that ad. And again, that example of Oprah, she's, she doesn't want, she doesn't want to do an ad read, right? And and it might compromise her own brand because she does endorse lots of different products for a lot of money. So yeah, so primarily we're going to see that. Now, now we're going to get into the difference between the embedded and the dynamically inserted ads. And uh, we are really, I would say, shifting in the ad space and podcasts to impression-based selling. And there's always a lot of talk about how are we measuring audience and, you know, what are we looking at? What are we looking at in terms of our reach? And, you know, so I guess just to kind of set the table with that information, I hear a lot of times people ask, what exactly is a download? And I could probably do an entire episode on just what a download is. But I think that it gets confusing oftentimes because, Many people stream podcasts. They don't necessarily always download them. Now, we all know you can download a podcast. And then if you're on a plane or for some reason, the bathroom in my gym does not get any sort of reception. And I'm like, I really need to download my podcast so that when I'm in there, I can actually listen to them, which is very frustrating to me. Um, but it depends on where you're at. You may or may not have reception. So you might need to download a podcast. And there's 
you know, there are many people who do. You can also subscribe and automatically download the podcast, right? So physical downloads of podcasts do happen. However, the bulk of people are actually just streaming that podcast. They're not necessarily downloading them, but they're still counted as a download. And so when we talk about the downloads of a podcast, we're talking about essentially the plays. How many times has this podcast been played? The other number that is out there are their unique listener number, right? So how many unique people are listening to this podcast? And what we find with podcasts that have large back catalogs is that, you know, you're getting lots of downloads across the platform, but your audience number is obviously smaller than your download number is. And so that is something to consider. And when we look at buying podcast ads, we can either buy them on a per episode basis, or we can buy a number of impressions. So when we talk about buying podcast ads on a per episode basis, you're just reaching the listeners that listen to that one episode, as opposed to getting a certain number of impressions. When you buy impressions, you are getting the same person multiple times. So there really is a lot of power in impression-based selling because you have the ability to reach that person multiple times, as opposed to just one time if you're advertising in just one episode. And in this space, we typically talk about episode buying as embedded or baked in. And we talk about impression-based ad buying as dynamically inserted. And the reason we call it dynamic insertion is because that ad is being dynamically inserted electronically with software across the catalog of episodes. They both have a lot of power. The industry is certainly moving toward impression-based selling. So that is something to be aware of as you're out and about talking to people is that impression-based selling. Now, we also have the opportunity for programmatic ad buying. And programmatic ad buying is going to happen through some sort of a third party, right? You um, are going to need to have an account or go through an agency that has the ability to do programmatic ad buying. But the value of programmatic ad buying is that it does remove a level of friction right? You can get lots of impressions. You can get on lots of podcasts. You can upload your own creative. And typically you're paying a lower price than you would for that host read ad. Now it depends a lot on your targeting. The more specific you're targeting, the more expensive the ad buy is going to be. The other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is typically when you're buying on a per podcast basis, like if you come to us at True Native Media, you are reaching that full audience across the country and in some instances across the globe. So if you are a regional advertiser, for instance, or if you're looking specifically to reach certain metropolitan areas or markets, you really are not going to be able to do that with standard podcast ad buying because when you buy through us, you reach everyone. You don't just reach a specific segment. Now, Obviously, if you are a D2C brand or a product that is widely available in retail locations throughout the country, if you're software, if you're an app, then national reach is a really powerful thing. But if you are looking to target, then you most likely will want to look towards something like programmatic ad buying. There are some podcasts that are so large that they can do targeting within that podcast. But that really is kind of, I would say, the top 1% of podcasts that are large enough to do podcast-based targeting. So that's something to consider as well. When you're looking at buying programmatic ads, you also have to be really in tune with the type of creative that you're putting together because you don't want to just take a radio ad and just put the radio ad out there on your programmatic ad because it isn't going to resonate the same with the audience. And I like to think of it like I'm listening to a podcast and as I listen, there are a couple of different options, right? Like I hear an ad from the host or I hear an announcer read ad and a lot of shows have them intermixed, right? Well, I'm going to pay more attention to the host read ad than I am the announcer read ad unless the announcer read ad is done super well. So I love announcer red ads where they reference the podcast, where they say the sponsor of the podcast today is Evergreen Tree Delivery. 
you know, and suddenly it's like, oh, this has some relation to this content that I'm listening to. So just make sure that your creative with programmatic is really going to be spot on so that you get the results that you're looking for. As you look to grow your podcast campaigns, it can be a really good approach to think about layering them together. So you may decide that you love your host read ads, but you also want to do programmatic and you can accomplish different things with them, right? So that host read ad is going to fall more in the influencer space where the programmatic ad maybe has more trackability, maybe it has more targeting capabilities, and also it's going to be a wider reaching number of impressions that maybe you're delivering as opposed to that host read. So it really just depends on the tactic that you want to take. There are lots of different layers that are involved in it. When you're thinking about putting your campaign together, it's important to really think about how your campaign is fitting into your overall media mix that you are creating. Because it's not just about podcasts, it's not just about the results of the podcast, but it's also about how that podcast ad impacts the other forms of advertising that you're doing. How is this podcast ad really informing that consumer about your product, educating them about your product so that they can take an easier buying decision or make an easier buying decision when they see you in other places? So that's really important. The last thing I want to mention is as you're putting your podcast ad campaigns together, make sure that you are getting mentions in show notes and on websites. If you can get additional social posts, having other elements that can bolster your podcast ad campaign will really help make it as effective as it could be. I hope that this episode has been educational and that you have learned a lot about podcast ad buying. If you're interested in buying podcast ads, we would love to help you at True Native Media. Head on over to truenativemedia.com and we can help you out. And if you're interested in learning more about buying podcast advertising, continue to listen to the show, of course, but you can also head on over to YouTube and check out my channel there. Thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you again next time. Thank you for listening to the Podcast to Advertising Playbook, your source to a better understanding of the podcast to advertising industry. 